Hey, Mark, the guitar guy here. I'm not going to talk this way the whole lesson. However, we're going to be doing uh, a continuation of the song Fields of Gold. Now, if you haven't learned that song already, that's okay. A lot of this lesson is going to be applied to people that um, just want to awesomeize some more chords because we're going to be focusing on the left hand on the chord progression that we're doing within the song Fields of Gold. Now if you want to learn that song go back to that lesson check it out there's a real in-depth lesson on the basic version and then this stuff we're doing right now is the more nuanced stuff so we're adding different layers and dimensions to exactly the same chords and strumming patterns okay so if that sounds like you go check those things out and we'll get into it. So if you've been following this you are ready for this next lesson we're going to be doing some cool cool changes to these chords. Now they're very subtle and um, you, you can very use these, these variations for all sorts of songs out there. It's not just this song. So it's applicable to everything. It's not just this one song. So any other songs out there that have these chords in it, you can do this stuff too and it will sound amazing. So let's start with the chords we're going to go through. So we've got an A minor. Now the A minor that I'm going to be doing is an A minor 7th, okay? Now A minor 7th, the basic A minor 7th is the third finger off, okay? So the, so the notation for that is going to be nothing on the top string, so nothing there. From the fifth string down we've got 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, okay? So there's only two fingers involved there. That's one version of the A minor 7. The other one is to add the little finger to the third fret of the first string, okay? It's down here on the G note, okay? That gives us two G notes within that chord. Don't worry if you don't know the theory behind that. It doesn't really matter. I'm pretty useless at that stuff myself. I just happen to know that for this chord. So I'm not super brainy when it comes to these things. I just like the sound of this. And to me, that's a pretty, pretty chord, and especially for this song. It's just got a lovely, lovely ring to it when those two G notes, they ring out through this chord. Okay, so that's the chord I use for the intro and I use off and on for other parts of the song. So when you add that with the strumming pattern, now you see what I was doing there, I was taking little fingers off, off and on, that sounds fine, just wherever you want to experiment with that with that A minor. And the same with the normal A minor, you've got the A minor, bring that finger off, on and off hear those notes changing, those notes changing, there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with that. Hear the changes going on? Okay, so that's the first way you can do that. Another way is you can use hammer-ons within the same chord. We'll go through all the chords in a second, but you can do the same thing. What I like to do with A minor is leave my first finger on and hammer on, hammer on the other two fingers those two fingers there from the A minor, that sounds super cool. Or if it's just the A minor 7, just one finger hammering on. So it might be on the very first beat. Hear how cool that sounds. I'm doing the right hand percussive style of strumming, so that's adding a lot more dimension. And go and check out that lesson if you want to as well, on how getting that really sounding awesome as well. But that's all I'm doing to that to make that interesting. I'm doing hammer-ons and doing variations with the A minor 7 chord. So that's the way to experiment with this. Just do one chord and do all the variations within the one chord and it programs in your mind, your subconscious mind, that A minor has all these other related little changes you can do to it that sound super cool and, you're, and there's a, a connection that starts happening there. So it's not just for this song, like I say, you can do this for all sorts of stuff with the A minor and usually it'll work with these little fingers added on and off and hammer-ons etc. Okay, so that's the A minor chord. Now if Traditionally we do an F chord with a bar chord. Now there's a bar chord I'm going to show you, or a version of an F chord, which is a little bit tricky to do, but it's it's really nice to play. And you don't, if you if you struggle with this chord, um, stick with the F chord, standard F chord. But this version of it is a little bit different the way we're going to play it. In fact, it's a lot different. The, the fingering for this is the thumb's going to come across the top and it's going to play the F note on the top string on the first fret. That's important. And then you've got under that, we've got nothing on the string below, which is the A string. Then we've got the fourth string, our third finger is going to be playing the third fret. We've got an open G note, or an open note on the G string, which is the third string. And then the first finger is going to be playing the bottom two strings together, 
which is the first fret and first fret. Okay, so I'll go back over that. So the tab for that would be one on the top string, one, nothing or cross. We've got three, zero, one, one. And the variation on that as well is our little finger comes down back again on that note it was on before with for the A minor on the bottom string. It's called a, I, I call it Hendrix chord. It's used in a lot of Hendrix stuff. This for the start of Castles Made of Sand, that's what he uses, this shape. It was really badly played, but it was something like that. It's an acoustic guitar, it's hard to play. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get that chord initially. And when you first do it, you'll find that you'll get some notes that are a bit dull, like that. That's normal. Just persevere and your fingers and your hand will get used to the feeling of that chord and stretch and adapt to make that chord sound cool and the notes will start coming out clearer and clearer. But it's the chord I really love to use when I'm using this song, when I'm doing this song. Because I'm going for an A minor 7 for the little finger, I'm just changing a couple of notes and I've, and I've got a, a totally new chord. But with those other two notes still ringing, those three notes at the bottom still ringing. And then I can, I've got an easy change with C as well. Okay, so that chord shape, it's very cool to play, very cool to play. And you can use that for any other F, it doesn't have to just be for the. You can alternate. Okay, so there's that variation. With that F chord, there's a few things you can do, so like a little finger off and on. Also, your second finger can come on. You can put your second finger just doing nothing during that chord. It can come on and play like a hammer on, on or off, on the second fret of that third string. Sounds like a bit of a siren going on there. So you can add that in there as well. Hammer ons or just on and off. You can hear how professional that's starting to sound with all the things we're doing with the right hand technique, with the percussiveness, changing our chords, getting a little bit more adventurous with our chords, not just doing an F, we're doing an F with a little bit of a nuance to it. And all of a sudden we've got. We've got little notes and stuff happening within that percussiveness and that combined. And that's really pretty much all I'm doing when I'm doing songs and doing gigs. It just sounds so nice and it makes it more enjoyable for me. So that's the F chord, okay? One variation of that. Then we've got the C chord. Now the C, we can do the same thing by leaving the little finger on for C. I'm doing a three fingered C version here. Instead of doing the C with the, all the fingers on and adding the G note in there just to cover it when we're strumming, which you can do, we're gonna do three fingered C because it's leaving our little finger free to be able to do other notes. So the notes for that, we've got nothing on the top string, we've got three, two, zero, one, zero. We can add it to the bottom string on the three again on that third fret, and it's giving us that same G note that we've got through the other chords, and it gives us some con uh, look, consistency through those chords. So we've got the A minor. And that little finger doesn't move, it just stays there. I'll do that again. So watch, there's not much movement going on. First two fingers stay there the whole way. The bottom two fingers, I should say, the bottom two strings. Back through it again, A minor seventh. With that funny F chord. I don't have to move any fingers for that, except for the top two strings. And then there's the C. Okay, so that's the C chord. Now also we can do that C chord. We can, we can take the little finger off and we can add it underneath the third finger, which gives us, if we're doing the tab for that, zero and nothing, well nothing on the top string, then we've got three, three, zero, one, zero. Okay, and if we go between the normal C with a three fingered C and the other one, you can hear that change, little C, finger on. Even going, see all the different variations I'm doing there? So it's the variations on the C chord. So once again, whenever you're doing a C, you can do any of these in any order that you feel is cool with you. You don't, don't have to follow a formula. Just try stuff out, and if you like it, hey, that's the way you want to do it. Another way of doing with C, you can actually do some hammer-ons. There's cool places for hammer-ons. The C, the most important note for the C is the bass note. It's the C is the th third fret on the fifth string. The other notes that we can hammer on are our first and second fingers. Even we 
can do a little hammer on there onto our little finger from the third, from the second fret to the third fret. There's another one there, so. So you're creating melodies within the chord progression, basically. So we've just got a C chord here, and we're just trying to make the C interesting. So whenever you're doing this and practicing this, just do one chord for like a thousand bars, or well, no, maybe not that many, but do a lot of bars of one chord and add all the nuances and go over them and over them because once again you're making that connection between the fingers and the feeling and the subconscious and how it sounds and you're making those all those amazing little connections within the brain and the subconscious on the sounds you're hearing and how to do them. So when you go into another song and that happens to have a C chord in it, you'll do the same little ideas and they'll work really well. So that's all that is by doing all that programming and experimenting. So we've got normal C, little finger on there, little finger on, hammer-ons, and hammer-on, hammer-on, hammer-on. Okay, so that's the C chord. Okay, we've got one other chord to do, which is just the G chord. Now the G doesn't feature a hell of a lot in the song. It's just very much a passing chord. Now what I do with this song, um, because it only features so, so quickly, I'm just sticking with the basic G chord. I'm not going to do anything too crazy with it. There's stuff we can do with a G chord, and we'll cover that in some other songs. But because the G is only featured very, very quickly, it's a passing chord. It's a chord we pass through to get to another chord. We don't really have time to throw stuff in, and it's just going to be messy if we throw other stuff in. So we're just going to keep G as it is, okay? So I'm going to play through a little bit of the song now, and just without singing, and I'm just going to go through, and, and you'll hear all the, a lot of the things that you've just experienced happening okay I know this is a long video but persevere and just at this stage watch and listen and listen out for those little ideas that were going on okay so we're going from the intro techniques going on within that section but it sounds so much nicer to me at least I hope it sounds nice to you than just the basic chords all we're doing is just adding another layer of, of, of technical ability on top of it there's lots going on with the right hand sure there's lots going on with the left hand but that doesn't mean it's difficult it just needs to be programmed once it's programmed you can just do whatever you want with it you can have some fun and it's like you're sitting back watching this awesome guitar stuff happening it really is like that so I hope you like this lesson I hope you like this my style of teaching and I hope you're getting some really really fun stuff out of this way of learning guitar anyone can do this you don't have to be amazing 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 it's just a matter of programming and getting these things done i hope you like my lessons please subscribe to the channel and support our channel we're going to be back here every saturday we're going to be doing a new song every saturday and i'm going to be dissecting exactly how i play this song on acoustic guitar sometimes we're going to be using a looper doesn't matter if you don't have a looper we can do it without a looper but some cool stuff really can be done with a looper it's so so simple to do and um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of you guys. And please let everyone know about this channel. I can't wait to see you guys again for the next lesson. In the meantime, grab your guitar, go strum the hell out of it, and we'll see you soon.